seen the pattern begin to develop. And that is that the probability tends to peak toward the condition in which the molecules are balanced between those two chambers. And if we go to 10 molecules, we see that this is even more significant. That is, if I look at the distribution of probabilities for 10 molecules, if I have everything on the right and everything on the left, then I can immediately calculate the probability of that because we've already done that. That's one half raised to the number of particles in the system. That's one half to the tenth power, and that gives us probability of nine times 10 to the minus four. Tiny probability that everything is sequestered on the right versus the left. The most probable distribution is one where we have five molecules on the left and five molecules on the right. That's the condition of peak probability. If I go to 100 molecules, now you notice what is happening. The distribution is narrowing dramatically as I increase the number of particles in the system. I can calculate the probability for everything on the right, though, with the same equation. That's 1 half to the hundredth power, and that's equal to 7.9 times 10 to the minus 31. So even with 100 molecules, the probability of finding 100 molecules all on one side is essentially zero. Now, if I go to Avogadro's number, which is 6 times 10 to the 23 molecules, if I plot the probability of that, that is an extremely narrow line right in the center which says that I'm going to have an equal number of molecules on the left-hand side, that is 3 times 10 to the 23 on the left-hand side, and 3 times 10 to the 23 on the right-hand side. So we're now in a position to calculate the number of microstates for a general system. And what we've deduced is that we could calculate the number of microstates for two molecules and three molecules by actually looking at each of those cases. When we go to 10 molecules, 100 molecules, or Avogadro's number, we need a more coherent, clear way of calculating the number of microstates. So we will set W equal to the number of microstates. And there's a very easy way to calculate that. If we look at our two-bulb configuration, if I want to calculate the number of microstates for a given configuration, I have to take the number of molecules that I'm looking at, the factorial of that number, and I have to divide it by the factorial of the number of molecules in each available volume, that is, the left-hand side or the right-hand side. And I have to multiply that in the denominator by the number of molecules in the alternative position, but I have to take the factorial of that. So let's take our 10 molecule case, because when we move to 10 molecules, we're actually getting very close to everything we need to calculate probability for the calculation of entropy. So let's just pick out an example here. Let's, let's look at the case where we have seven molecules in the left-hand side and three in the right. So we'll write that as the number of microstates with seven in the left-hand side and three in the right. But we can immediately do that calculation because the number of molecules is 10, so that's 10 factorial. The number of molecules in the left-hand chamber is 7, so that's 7 factorial, times the number in the right-hand side is 3 factorial. Well, we know exactly how to do that calculation, and that's 120 microstates available in the configuration with seven in the left and three on the right. And lo and behold, that's how many microstates there are. 
Okay, now let's do one more calculation. Let's do the calculation in which we have 5 in the left and we have 5 in the right. We're now an expert at doing that calculation. That's 10 factorial divided by 5 factorial times 5 factorial. And when we calculate that out, that's equal to 252. So we notice that 252 represents the case not only of an even distribution of molecules in the left-hand side and the right-hand side, but it has the greatest number of microstates. So the greater the number of microstates, the higher the probability. And that is a fundamental conclusion, that the largest number of microstates corresponds to the configuration of greatest probability. Now, let's remind ourselves of one other very important thing. This lists the possible final configurations. The configuration corresponds to the situation where those molecules are indistinguishable. And you can see that when you look down the line, we've lost track of which one was A, which one was B, which one was C. The configuration loses the specific identification of each molecule. The microstates, on the other hand, keep exquisite track of where A is, where B is, where C is, where each one of those molecules are. And the beautiful thing about this is we've looked at the case with 2, 3, and 10 molecules, but this applies all the way up to Avogadro's number of 6 times 10 to the 23 molecules. So those fundamental principles carry us from a very logical stepping through 2 to 3 to 10 to running all the way up to Avogadro's number.